Hello and welcome to day 37 of the Corona blog, May the 12th. My name is Mark Brophy, some background information and what I currently do. Continue with our series of interviews around the world, looking at people, the situation in different countries. Today, we're looking at the UK, a country I know well, the United Kingdom. We're going to look at the current situation and the help to business The UK was slow to enter uh, lockdown, uh, initially appearing to favour a strategy known as herd immunity. And then Boris Johnson caught the coronavirus and ended up in intensive care. So the UK entered on the 23rd of March. On the 5th of May, it overtook Italy as the highest number of deaths outside of now the, apart from America. And on the 10th of May, Boris Johnson changed strategy from stay at home to stay alert. The reaction to the pandemic has not been so great um, in terms of lockdown. But what about the help to the economy? So we're going to interview somebody, ask the name and occupation, whereabouts in the UK, help to companies, the self-employed, families, and a prediction about the end of lockdown. So, good afternoon, here we are. Can you tell me your name and what you do for a living, please? Hi, Mark, and my name is Louise Kulbitsky and I am self-employed. I run a website called Study Legal English to provide legal English resources for uh, non-native English speakers around the world. And whereabouts in the UK are you? I am currently in lockdown at my parents' house in the countryside in Norfolk, east of England. East of England. Okay, area I know quite well. So let's talk about what the UK government is doing to help the economy and UK citizens, starting with companies. What is the UK government doing to help companies? So the UK government, just before uh, lockdown, announced this scheme, which is widely known as the furlough scheme, but it's, it's, its official name is the coronavirus job retention scheme. I'll refer to it as the furlough scheme, it's much easier. Um, and under that scheme, the government offers directly to companies um, grants to pay for 80% of the wages of employees and the amount is capped at £2,500 per month. Um, so this is for companies who they're unable to maintain their employees because of corona and whereas under normal situation um you know outside of corona under this kind of situation the employees would probably be made redundant um the government is trying to allow these workers to be kept on kept on the payroll even though they're not working um but to still you know to support the companies through that so that they can provide the, the payment to the workers um, it is available to all kinds of companies um, you know small companies large companies um, also for charities and for not not for profits it's not available for publicly funded organizations so for example universities um, they're, they're not you know lecturers for example under that scheme aren't allowed to apply for it um, and the way that it works is that the employer uh, you know makes an agreement with the employee that they'll be furloughed then the employer it's the employer that applies for it not the employee so the employer goes through this step-by-step -step process online which seems relatively straightforward um, where they calculate the 80% of the wages and then make the application online and they should receive the, the payments within I think it's six days, something like that. Um, and it seems to be actually working quite well because uh, the, the, the process is quite smooth because it's employers applying for the scheme. You know, the government's not having to make so many payments as if it was the employees. So one quick question there. Yeah. Has any cash arrived yet? Mark, I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know because I'm not an employee. And um, however, my um, my brother-in-law um, has mentioned that uh, many of um, he, he works for a, a kind of um, umbrella group that, of, of 
newspapers and many people have been furloughed in that organization but i don't know whether they've been paid yet but i think so you know i, I think it has been working but don't quote me on that um but i did read in uh, recently in an article that it's been um taken up very widely uh, over six million people have been furloughed in England and the government, um, the, the cost of that will be around eight billion pounds uh, that okay. was as of May the 3rd. So quite, quite significant. Um, what about self-employed people? Have self-employed people received any assistance? So with self-employed people, the first thing that happened so the, the government introduced the scheme for, for employed people like you know really early on they didn't introduce a scheme like that for self-employed people straight away so a lot of self-employed people actually applied for universal credit which is like the or informally you know we call going on the dole or the benefit scheme or um you know claiming benefits um and that's the kind of scheme that most non you know unemployed people would go on even regardless of the covid situation um so the problem with that there were a lot of complaints early on because the the, the unemployed people who were who were previously employed but self you know self-employed people were having trouble with this scheme because um the, the base rate is only 400 pounds per month um and there were a lot of restrictions and so many people were, were applying for it as well that there was a lot of issues where people were not even getting through to the application process they weren't even able to have their application process so let alone then get through to receiving the money um so then there were a lot of complaints about that i mean it was something like six, it was like two million people applied for it in a very short space of time. It was like six times the amount of normal applications. Um, and because of all these problems, there were a lot of complaints. And so the government introduced this other scheme called the self-employed payment scheme, something like that, the self-employed support scheme. Um, and that was supposed to kind of be quite equivalent to the job retention scheme similarly the self-employed can can get paid 80 percent of their um of their previous income up to a limit of 2500 per month but there are a lot of restrictions for that which are not applied to the job retention scheme um and there have been quite a lot of complaints. I've got a few friends in the kind of arts industry that a lot of people are falling through the cracks with that because it just doesn't reflect the reality of, of how self-employed people work and are employed. And um, so there are- Okay, so it sounds it. quite similar to other countries. The self-employed seem to be difficult people to help uh, because- yeah. Okay, and families, has the UK government done anything to help families or people who are neither self-employed or working? Yes, so well, there are a few other things worth uh, mentioning here. Um, so one thing is that for, for families or for basically for anyone who's got a mortgage, um, the government has introduced payment holidays where pay, mortgage repayments have been uh, frozen for three months so um, mortgage borrowers don't have to repay make their mortgage repayments during this time so and whereas normally if you defaulted on a mortgage repayment that would affect your credit rating um, under this system your credit rating isn't affected at all um, so that's one thing um, the other thing for families is that if um, if your if your children were in school and receiving you know were, were able to receive free lunches then of course now you know the school can't provide the free lunches um, the schools are supposed to provide some kind of vouchers like supermarket vouchers to to help those families who are struggling literally to put food on the table um, and what other things I think there are still 
you know, as, as previously, you know, um, families would still be able to claim through the universal credit system uh, for this, uh, you know, benefits for, for their children. Um, I don't know quite how that's been been affected. Um, and I think there was another point. Um, oh, yes. Um, so for those uh, key workers, like in, you know, most countries, uh, the key workers who have to go to work, NHS workers, um, their children are still able to attend school. Uh, so, you know, there's not many. Okay, of them. that's not the case in many other countries. Okay, and finally, on Sunday, we saw Boris Johnson uh, speaking to the nation, and it doesn't seem to be clear when lockdown will finish in the UK. What's your personal opinion? When do you think lockdown will finish? Yeah, it's a difficult question, Mark. Um, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I just really hope that it ends soon but you know I, I i don't want it to i don't wouldn't want lockdown the lockdown restrictions to be lifted prematurely because we're all scared of this second wave um of course like you know uh, once a vaccine is is uh, produced and then hopefully things will be going back to normal uh, or probably a different normality to that that we're used to um but that's probably not going to be for you know six, eight, 12 months time, 18 months, who knows. Um, so I don't know, it, we, the government has introduced this kind of like, you know, phase, this, this phase of re reducing the restrictions. I'm hoping that we can at least, you know, go out, have a coffee in July, but that, uh, who knows, who knows what's gonna happen. In terms of me being able to get back to Italy where I'm normally based, I have no idea when that's going to be. Okay. Well, thanks very much, Louise. Thanks for speaking to us. And we hope to see you soon in the future. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. Mark. Thank you. Bye bye. So we spoke to Louise, Louise Kulbitsky, and she's a teacher to legal students around the world, also through a website called the Legal English Podcast. She's based in Norfolk, uh, which is a county just northwest of northeast, sorry, of London. Help to the companies. Well, the furlough scheme. The furlough scheme is a scheme whereby employers keep their employees on the books and the government gives 80% of the salary to the companies and the companies then pay the employees. Self-employed people, a bit confusing. Initially, they applied for universal credit, which is a very low amount of money, about £400 a month, uh, and then a similar scheme to the furlough scheme in that 80% of previous earnings has been put in place, but there have been some difficulties. Families, well, mortgage relief for three months and help to people through their children. So children who need free school meals receive some form of voucher and parents who have to work, who have jobs which we call frontline jobs, their children are allowed to go to school. When does she think lockdown will end? No idea. Hoping to have a coffee in July and hopefully would like to get back to Italy sometime soon where she often works as well. So today we've looked at the UK, population of 66.6 million. The reason if we look at this graph why lockdown hasn't ended is quite clear. The daily new cases are still reasonably high. We've flattened the curve, but it doesn't seem to be coming down. So the new cases are staying at a reasonably high level. Today we've looked at the UK, problems with lockdown, an interview with Louise and the number of new cases. Mm -hmm.